Well, joining us from our Abuja studio is uh, politician and lawyer, Senator Magnus Abbey. Senator, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for, for having me this morning. Thank you. Right. Now, let me begin this way. It's been a mixed bag of emotions for a majority of persons when you're talking about one year in office of the president. But uh, talk to us uh, from your perspective, how committed the president has been to his uh, promises uh, when he gave his seven-point agenda of uh, renewed hope. Well, first of all, let me, let me congratulate the president and congratulate all Nigerians for another landmark achievement for all of us as a nation, which is the successful completion of the first year after a peaceful transition of power in this country. Whether we like it or not, Nigeria is gradually establishing its reputation as a growing democracy. And I think that is something that is worthy of celebration in itself. Now, coming to the Tinubu administration, I must say that uh, I have listened to a lot of those who criticize the president, and also I've had the opportunity and the privilege of listening to the president and those in the administration based on the things that have happened over the course of the last one year. Yes, granted that there are some economic challenges in the country, which is visible and expected in these circumstances. I think even the most uh, rabid cri critic of the president will admit that the president has been consistent in his electoral promises and his commitment to the Renewed Hope Agenda and the improvement of the welfare and security of Nigerians. So I want to say categorically that any objective observer, objective is a word, will agree that um, despite a very, very rocky foundation and despite the very difficult economic circumstances in which the nation has found itself from years of neglecting the things that we ought to do. I believe that um, the president has started very well and the Renewed Hope agenda is on course. And he has also shown the ability to listen to Nigerians. If you watch what happens in the country, um, whenever the people are on one side and the government is on the other side, the president will be with the people and the government will have to change. Like recently in the cybersecurity uh, tax, the president came out openly to back the people, not because the law is not there to support what the government was doing, and it was not even something that was started by his own administration or passed by his administration, but he understood that the difficulty of the times made the implementation of some of these things a bit uh, tight on, on the Nigerian people. And uh, he sided with the people. So he's been a listening president. He has taken some very difficult decisions as far as the economy is concerned, particularly with the removal of uh, the fuel subsidy and um, the exchange rates, merging the exchange rate and all that. But these are things that every enlightened person in this country has agreed over the years that we need to do it for Nigeria to move forward. So that, those are the few things economically on which there was general consensus among the Nigerian people that these were things that needed to be done. So when Tinubu comes out and then he does what we have all agreed to do over the years, which nobody could do, and then people turn around and uh, begin to criticize the same things they had wanted, not because it is not what they want, but because of the person who has done them, and they begin to say, oh, it shouldn't have been done like this, it should have been done like that. But however you wanted it done, it was never done, and now it is done. So if we come together as a country, 
pass through the difficulties and bumps that are occasioned by these policies, we'll get to the other side of the river. And there, the grass definitely will be greener for all of us. So instead of wasting time arguing over how, how it was done or who did it, why don't we embrace the thing that we know that will help the country and do our best to see how we make the best of it so that the country can move forward for the benefit of all Nigerians. Tinubu is just here to pilot the affairs of a country for this time, but this country is our own and it will continue to be our own. Yes, uh, um, Magnus, it's, uh, it's a very interesting thing that you have said about the, the reactions to the uh, removal of poor subsidy and the uh, collapsing of the uh, foreign exchange regimes and all of that, and that everybody agreed, including the two major opposition parties, the Labour and, uh, and the PDP, that this was going to be done. And when... He did it. They made it look as though the thing was a strange thing out of some uh, Aesop tale uh, written uh, uh, during the time of, uh, of ancient uh, uh, mariners. And, and, then, and, then, and then many people thought that even if, if they didn't remove the fuel subsidy, people, the people in the oil sector were going to act as though it was coming. So it was almost inevitable. Now, why is it, I want, you to, I want you to answer this question, why is it that some people have made it their career in this past one year just to cripple the president and his actions, that, 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 that we have not had this kind of dean, this kind of rub up in our history till now? Speak to this level of hate. Yeah, you Sam, think that we are living, we are, we are in a no, war Sam, with, Sam, another, it, it, with another people. Yeah. No, 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 that's not true, Sam. I want to disagree with you. It's, it's normal, it's politics. You know, while you are looking at the issues of governance, but politicians are already looking at the next election. How are they going to win it? How are they going to discredit the government? It's always been that way. You remember at a time when Jonathan was president, Jonathan said he is the most abused president in the history of Nigeria. He was not. Obasanjo said he was the most abused in the history of Nigeria. He was not. Buhari felt he was the most abused in the history of Nigeria. He is not. Today, people think that Tinubu is the most abused. In he will not be. The next person will still be abused. So I think that any, and I know President Tinubu very well, I don't think he's bothered by what people are saying. Any president who has his agenda and has his commitment to the country, you get in there, you do your job. Part of your job is to overcome the opposition. You have to defeat them, not just in the election, but defeat them in running the country. So if you're waiting for them to help you, you will not succeed. So I don't think that anybody who is listening to what... Uh, Politicians are saying to try to make every... Okay, yesterday, let me give you an example. For years, we've been talking about the, the old national anthem. And then I was somewhere yesterday, they've tried to revert to the old national anthem. And somebody was saying, no, this is not the right time. I started laughing. So it does not matter what you do. Those who don't support you will not support anything that you do because... If they say you're doing well, it means that there is no job for them. So criticizing what you do is their own job. That's how they create their own job and sustain the expectation of their supporters. So I don't think that any serious government should be bothered by criticism. It's just to look at what they are saying. And the president does that. When there is merit in the criticism, he listens to it. When it's politics, he comes out and says, okay, if you want to do politics, Come and wait for the next election. We are waiting for you. So I think the president understands very well that it's nothing personal. It's Nigerian politics. And our politics is unending. That's why if you're not careful, a lot of people don't achieve anything because they spend all the time focusing on the politics and the animosity in the system. And they forget governance. So if you look at some of the states where... Their focus is totally on politics. They've achieved nothing over the past one year. 
But if you look at the president, he has brought rolled out his policies in every sector. He is working. If you come here to the FCT, you know, you'll be amazed at what is going on. If you look at what the, the works minister is doing, look at the launching of the coastal road, for example. People are criticizing the coastal road. But people forget that this was designed by N NDDC almost 20 something years ago. But nobody could do anything about it. And today, the president has come out, despite all the talk and all that, he has rolled off the coastal road and people are still criticizing it. But he understands the importance of this road to the economy and that it will be a legacy project for which he will be remembered long after his critics have been forgotten. All the things they are saying now about the road, once the road is working, nobody will remember these things. Everybody will be celebrating it, that, oh, Tinubu was the greatest person, but that's how it works in politics. So the steps he has taken in the economy, to me, he should focus on how to stabilize the exchange rate. Stability, not necessarily bring down the Naira or bring it up or whatever, but let's achieve stability. And the economy will pick up. Once the economy picks up, tomorrow people will say, oh, Tinubu was the greatest uh, president, he was the most outstanding economically. That's what they will say when you succeed. But they are not going to say that while you're carrying the burden and you are in the process of struggling to get to where you're going. That's your own burden. That's why you're the president. So if you sit down and become emotional, oh, they're abusing me, why wouldn't they abuse you? Anytime you want to succeed, people must abuse you. That's how you succeed. Who was the most abused uh, presidential candidate in the election? Was it not Tinubu? Who is the president today? Is it not Tinubu? All the people that were abusing, where are they now? What are they saying? So I think that if you know where you're going, focus on your road. And that's what the president is doing. And I want to encourage him to stay focused. People, you are the president. If they don't abuse you, who will they abuse? It's their yeah. job. Let them do their yeah, job. He, you focus on your job. Yeah, he has always, always said that... Uh, is always focused on that uh, the, the the quickest route between two points is uh, a straight line. He says it takes a geometric approach. To it. But when I was talking about those people who were criticizing, I was not focusing on politicians. I was talking about the online rabble, what uh, Shoenka called the memidons of uh, of uh, some of these leaders. This yes, yes. So so that was what I was talking about wow. because. Jonathan didn't have this kind of online online attack because the online was still social media was still in the same fancy. It's, it's growing. But we have it's, it. We have it as a, as a barrage, an army of uh, an army of uh, unthinking of thinking rabble. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I enjoy. I enjoy. I enjoy reading what they say. I enjoy listening to them. I enjoy the drama. But I looked through it. I was uh, watch, watching a, a something one lady was saying the other day. Oh, how she met Tinubu. Tinubu promised her. Tinubu said he has no this thing. She had to take her money to fly to this. She is convening the North. She, the people are trying to whip up us. And I was just laughing. I said, okay, if the president has an agenda, it's to you on social media. You should come and explain his agenda. What, are you the National Assembly? You know, are you the leader of the North? When did the North meet you to elect you? A spokesman. So people talk as if they are talking for a given demographic. But you have to remember that everybody is actually talking for themselves. So on the social media, I can come out today and sound as if I'm talking for the whole of the Niger Delta. But the Niger Delta people did not at any time meet to elect me as their spokesperson. Neither can what I say represent all the views of the Niger Delta. So... Reading social media, you have to read it with that understanding that, yes, there could be a barrage from a certain group, but they don't necessarily speak for that demographic. Interesting. Uh, so we, we could see that um, the president is actually, he has, he has actually inaugurated several projects. You know, he was in Lagos you know, just a few days ago, and then he, he said this is a time for him to brag. Uh, but then we all know that government is in service to the people, and all of the government um, uh, projects are geared towards Making, the, making life better for the people. But one thing is, in your own view, do you think that this administration 
adequately consults the people before it embarks on some of this project to ask whether this project is something that they also agree to and uh, of what benefits it would be for them. So where do you think the place of uh, public consultation uh, actually is and how has this administration you know, explored this, you know, um, this opportunity in speaking to the people and ask whether it is something they really want as against what they're doing? You know, first of all, let me say this. I don't think that leadership is a is a pool uh, is a pool something. You don't you don't go to ask everybody what they want and do what they want. That's what the election is for. I always give the example of uh, the former British Prime Minister, who after winning the election, now went back to ask the British people, "Do you want Brexit or you want to stay in the EU?" But he just won the election. And it was his responsibility to decide because the power to take decisions is what the people gave you when they voted for you. And of course, he went back to the people to ask if they wanted to leave the EU. And then he, after winning the election, now campaigned for them to remain in the EU and he lost. And lost both his seat, which he just won, as well as the economic place of Britain in the European Union in one fell swoop. And that was a decision that he knew was not good for the British economy. And as the elected leader, he could have led the people in the direction he knew was best for the British people. So to me, yes, it's important to listen to the people. But once you're the leader, you have to look at the future and you see a whole wider array of issues and all that that are not visible to the public. And so that's why a leader sometimes will take a decision that even the majority was, does not agree with, because he believes that it is in the interest of the people long term. That's your responsibility of a leader. So if you're a leader and then every time you go to the people, you say, oh, should I do this, should I do So what are you there for? So I think that what the president does in listening to the people, you view their concerns. And if it is reasonable, you, you go with them and you take care of that concern after taking everything else into consideration. It's the right way to go. But to say that you have, to, you, you, have, you have the money, you have the power, you are to decide what is best for the rest of us. So if we, we now say, okay, you have to ask the people what they want before you do them and all that and all that, sometimes it, we may just go around in circles. You know? So I think that a visionary leader must see beyond what the people are seeing in certain circumstances and move the people in a given direction. That's what leadership is about. So if you look at the Coastal Road, for example, this was a road that right back from when NDDC started in the days of uh, Timi Alaibi in NDDC, they brought in Germans, they brought in all sorts of people and looked at this thing, that this is what will link the economy of the South-South and the South-East directly to, to Lagos. And this road is coming with a rail. This is a life-changing economic opportunity for Nigeria. So if you start listening to all the side comments and all that, it won't get done. But once this road is done, you can get up in the morning, be in Lagos. By tomorrow morning, you finish what you're doing. You're back in Port Harcourt or in Aba. You can move your goods. You know, it expands. It doubles the size of the market in the country in one move. And it comes with a rail. So what are you listening to? I believe that the place of a leader, okay, today they are commissioning the, the Abuja light rail. I said I must go there because any country that understands the importance of transportation in the lives of the ordinary people, you're already 10 miles ahead of your competition. So if you're living in Abuja and the rails are working, you can stay in a place where housing is cheap, but your job is far and live the good life that you want because of the rail that can take you to your work and bring you back on time to come and meet your family. So all these things are things that leaders will do because they know that ultimately the interests of the people are better served by when you have a plan and you know that that plan is in their interest and you factor it into what you're doing. But if every time you want to do something, you say, well, what are people saying? What are people not saying? Where are we going to go with that? So I believe that the president is a listening president. He's listening to the people. He has taken the long-term economic view for the country and he's working to achieve that. And um, reasonable Nigerians have seen them talking. They all support what he's doing. And uh, 
because they are not trolling the president or abusing him, if Ngozi uh, Okonjo-Iwela, for example, says something, nobody, it will not go viral. But if some uh, unknown person who does not even understand the world economy or something says something, then the next day is viral. They say, oh, uh, people are abusing the president. That's not the way it works. Reasonable people know those they should listen to who understand what is going on and uh, the direction we should be going. Interesting. Perhaps uh, another word might be that um, the government might need to look into strategic communication such that the people understand that whatever it is doing or project it is embarking on is in their best interest at the end of the day. But my next question to you is uh, the matters of the shocks the economy has witnessed and the dis dissatisfactions this has raised, especially when you look at uh, the NLC, organized labor, as it stands right now, uh, organized labor worked out on the conversation tripartite committee was having with regards to um, the matters of wage increment. Talk to us about how government is engaging uh, the organized labor with regards to ensuring that uh, there is that wage that reflects the economic situation we see now and the realities on the ground. No, let, 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 me, let me shock you. I have never supported Nigerian labor. I don't believe that they are working for the working people. They are working for the press. Because if you're a labor movement, when you're discussing this kind of issue, you're not going to, see, it, it, I don't, I, 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 you're not going to sit down and start calculating what one individual will need to buy his own car, fuel his own car, pay his own medical bill. That's not how a country works. If labor is looking at what is best for the interest of the Nigerian worker, labor is not going to say oh, you should give everybody one one million. Because anybody who understands economics knows that if you give everybody one one million, the money will be useless to them. In less than a month, everything will be one million naira, and the one million naira will turn to ten naira. So the people will suffer. So people who understand these things, when you go to go and negotiate with government, you don't talk as if you are going to every individual will have to be his own government. Must be funded by the government to be his own government. You engage the government on the needs of people. What do people need money for? People need money for medical care. People need money for transportation. People need money for housing. People need money for school fees. People, there are different reasons why people need money. If you live in London, the British government does not pay everybody enough to buy their own car, but they run an underground rail system that makes it dead cheap for everybody in London to be able to move around, whether you have a car or not. And they give concessions to the elderly, to students, to children. They have all sorts of rebates. So with just 30 pounds, you can move around London to everywhere you want to go for one month. You don't need to own a car. So if British Labour were going to go and negotiate with the British government, they say no, pay everybody enough for them to have their own car, drive their own car, fuel their own car. How is that going to work? If people pool their resources together, you can get better transportation. Labor is not discussing education. It's not discussing how to revamp the schools. It's not discussing how housing for the Nigerian people. They are not putting up anything for mud gauges and all that uh, for public housing. They are not discussing uh, public transportation. They are not discussing any of the things that the worker really needs to be an efficient worker. All they are focusing on is that give everybody money. What kind of uh, discussion is that? How will that help people? So if your focus is on the Nigerian worker, you should know what his problems are. What does he need? Money is a tool to achieve something. If you can achieve those things for which you need money without having all the, the, the money, what, do you, what is it? What, what, how can the, the civil servant in a, a proper uh, country where things are working be able to turn down bribes? But a civil servant in Nigeria cannot turn down any bribe. It's because even if you're an honest man in Nigeria, you must have money to pay for everything because the All government right. doesn't do the things it should do. So if labor is serious about helping the Nigerian people, they should not just be talking about money. Give everybody money. Right. We know what that will cost. It will make All the right. money useless. So they should engage okay. the government. How do we provide transportation? What are we doing about education for the Nigerian child? Blah, 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 blah. By the time you, you take out those concerns for the parents, 
and the people and the, the people they will do their work efficiently even if they are not as a, as a rich right. Zangote, which we all cannot be. Okay. That's a fine place to leave this conversation, Senator Magnus Abbey, politician and lawyer. Thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much. Right. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll continue our conversation. Stay with us.